please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Ajay Shivastav, CEO of Dimension Corporate Finance, is with us now. Ajay, good morning. Uh, your your thoughts on uh, the market action now? It's been quite volatile of late. Uh, you reckon uh, uh, the market has uh, found a bit of bottom and uh, is ready to move on now after the last week's mid cap correction? I don't know whether it's ready to move on or not, but certainly one has gone into a very somnolent stage where there is no compelling stories to buy and maybe a few very, very obvious cases to sell. I think that's where the market is right now for us. So it's holding on to the portfolios, holding on to the large caps. And, uh, you know, the, I know the issue is when you look at the results also, you don't feel a compelling re-rating of stocks happening at this point of time. So your conviction to make big buys is missing in the month of May. You know, we might as well pre on a holiday and go away because it just <laughs> doesn't seem like that we're going to buy anything significant. Okay, so you getting holidays, that's good. You won't get them for long. Uh, you'll have to work up until midnight, Ajay. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, index uh, trading uh, time getting extended from October? Well, it's got good news for the divorce lawyers because I think that's where it's going to happen <laughs> because uh, people who are addicted to trading will be They're not listed. The or will be in the offices, whatever it is. So I think the divorce lawyers are going to have a good time with this whole development. Okay. I don't know, it's downright silly, absolutely, if you ask me that, you know, we will need to go and then why do I have a 24-hour trading desk and don't let people sleep at all and, uh, and it also does one thing. It exposes a lot of investors to huge risk even as they go to sleep. And I think that's not a good sign for an equity market. You've got to get a little bit of stability, some time for news to filter in, get accepted, get digested. And when the market opens, you come with a new thing. Here is going to be like a roller coaster, people responding to news, and uh, your you know cash holdings will get vitiated by what's happening in the futures market. So I think you know you are accelerating the cycle of volatility, and I don't know. Yeah, the logic is that you know more people can participate in the market, but that could be fair. But I think mm. you're going to accelerate volatility in a market which needs more stability at this point of time. Mm. Not but only you wouldn't have a problem if it were only the indexes, would you? Well, no, indexes is fine. I think index trading is fine because that's a direct, more directional plays on the market, and that's fine. But when you come to stock futures, that's where the problem starts. So I think index trading, no issues at all. I think you can trade as long as you want in that because that doesn't really affect people so much in the holding. But exact shareholding prices and movement can have major bearings on people's ability to hold them in the cash. Okay. So, I mean, not only good news for divorce lawyers, right? Good news for doctors as well with blood pressure, hypertension going up, so many hours of work. But anyway, jokes apart, uh, you know, you... <laughs> You did start off by saying that uh, th there is no uh, compelling argument to buy anything. But uh, what about the downside? Do you think that there's big selling pressure coming or are we going to just amble in this range of 10,000 to 11,000 over the next few months till more clarity emerges on, say, issues like election, etc.? See, I'm very clear, Sonia, that we don't think there'll be any major selling pressure coming for the large caps. So if you look at the large cap horizon, if you look at the large cap banks, if you look at the large cap IT companies, if you look at the large cap consumer companies, I doubt there will be any major selling. Even if selling comes, it can be absorbed easily. The problem sits in the small and the mid cap, where two things are happening at the same time. One is the SEBI change in the schemes of mutual fund. is going to have a lot of adjustment issues with that. And as these schemes get announced, the allocation to small cap, quote unquote small cap schemes could become a problem to hold these shares by the most of the mutual funds at this point of time. So I think you will see the pressure on the selling side has to come and possibly will come on the small caps. The definition of SEBI is of course anything greater than 12, 250. First company, if I'm not wrong, will be classified as a small cap. So I think that we should see pressure there because realignment of holdings, customer preferences are going to change or I think people will accept, we don't know that. But whatever way happens, there will be substantial divestments and movements in that lot. So one should expect a lot of volatility towards the lower side in small and mid cap stocks as compared to the large cap. I think large caps are fine, they're holding firm and there will be reasonable demand for every correction because people have seen that large caps have delivered strong returns so you don't have hesitated to buy it. Mm -hmm. But mid cap realignment of ownership 
is a new element totally. We don't know how to work with it. But mm -hmm. what we have done is mm -hmm. we have de-risked ourselves by reducing our holdings substantially in this sector. Okay. okay. Rupee Ajay, hits well, the lowest levels, 15-month uh, low yeah. for the rupee. It's it went to 67.07, now 67.03. Oh, yes. If you see the intraday chart of the currency, that uh, is quite telling. Uh, it's uh, obviously in an asset class which is now seeing quite a bit of uh, decline. Uh, but uh, uh, Ajay, uh, earnings reaction so far, uh, uh, your thoughts on whether we have seen enough uh, in terms of earnings to to believe that the, the upgrade cycle is starting or you think uh, that's still wishful thinking? Oh, certainly not. In fact, you know, I, that's why I said there's no compelling story because we have been frankly disappointed. We thought that if you compare it to the first quarter of last year, which was just coming out of the demonetization, etc., and the uncertainty into GST, would give us a lot more upside in this year compared to last year. That growth number is not matching up. And wherever it is matching up a little bit, we are seeing a substantial decline vis-a-vis -vis December quarter. So somehow or the other, for whatever various reasons, the profit margins are getting a hit. You said the US dollar rupee is one issue, cost of raw material is second issue, uh, maybe ability not to pass. But I think gradually what is sinking in is that substantial re rating of earnings is not taking place. And I think if the base effect moves up, you will see growth rate petering out in the next quarter, which is why I said that there's no compelling case to buy because no major, you know, give a few or take a few stocks, that's fine. But no major re-rating has happened in terms of earnings. Somebody's done explosively good earnings, whether it's cement, infrastructure, banks have been at par at 20% and Kotak was at 15% and so on and so forth. So nothing has changed dramatically while it was expected to change. And I, my belief is that I think we will amble along like this. We will pay the price for rupee dollar, we'll pay the price for oil price increases, and we'll also pay the price for the SMA sector which is gradually decimating over time which is i think it's a slow process grind but it is going to start affecting the macros of the economy very far you already seen exports slacking out quite substantially yeah. rupee is getting under pressure so now you're seeing the real effects of gst and demonetization coming into the economy and i don't think so the large caps can take the full burden to take the growth rate up Oh, that's extremely okay. well put and it's a, a sensitive sector which perhaps is not getting the attention it merits. As you say, it's showing up so well uh, in the lack of export performance despite a very good global growth story. So take your point entirely on that. But just to dwell a little more on uh, the macros, uh, rupee at 67.06 is uh, uh, fallen by 0.38% uh, and it is about the weakest. Filipino peso has also fallen by 0.36 percentage points. So uh, while all dollars strong, so all currencies are weaker to that extent, it's yeah. uh, rupee and Filipino peso which are the weakest and we are just a shade weaker. So I, that would be the spot of bother. Yes. If we were with the EMs, it wouldn't be the bother. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't be such a problem. The fact that we stand out just a bit uh, should be cause for a little bit of worry. Well, yes. Ajay, you know, I, just, I just wanted to sure. make a point. Uh, I think one stock which is now at the low point is Apollo Hospitals. Uh, just thought, uh, you know, there's uh, this report yesterday that uh, 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 you know, Delhi government is considering uh, capping hospital profit and first uh, government to do that. Uh, and of, of course, Apollo's main hospital is in Delhi. So that stock is making lows of the morning. But, uh, you know, uh, other hospitals, they have their own trouble now. It's becoming <laughs> yeah. an industry wide issue. Okay. Well, uh, Ajay, I, I wanted to ask you about the yields as well. Yields have dropped today because the Reserve Bank is uh, going to buy bonds on May 17th. Uh, separately, how do you look at the NBFC companies? We saw uh, mind-boggling numbers of growth from a company like DHFL and even India Bulls in terms of loan growth. Uh, which part of the NBFC space, if, if at all, do you like? See, I think, Lata, to be very comfortable, I think you and the HFC, the housing finance, looks to be a little better balanced than all other spaces. And I think uh, we have seen this, and uh, the fact that housing gives the maximum stability to the earnings, with the retail loans are a volatile area. We Yes, growth is coming in a lot of the NBFCs, but we don't know where it's going to end up, what kind of provisioning will come with it. And we have seen this cycle. It's not we have seen this cycle. If you go back to the cycle of ICICI Bank and Access, you will see that there was a major build up in retail and they took huge losses and then they tried to go to the corporate where they booked huge losses. So you have to be very wary and cagey that when you're buying these NBFCs at four to five times book values, running on retail oil, I think you need to be very careful. So as far as we are concerned, we have put all concentrated bets on either HFCs or life insurance companies or large banks. We have, I think, barely 
uh, one company or uh, two companies in the NBFC space is our entire holding of NBFC space and those two are which are diversified into portfolio management into equities in, into uh, placement into investment banking into mm -hmm. asset reconstruction so we have looked at those two companies only for a space pure lending shift, we have just walked out of the entire propositions they recovered quite well mm -hmm. and I think this is the beauty of this market Lata, that gives you chance again and again to get out at a good price, get in at a good price. Okay. You just got to be careful as to where you're planning your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Look at NBFCs, they were like 20% down less than a month and a half, two months back. Okay. They come back to here. So it, market keeps giving you a chance. It's up to investors to pick it up or not. Okay. Well, two stocks that are really getting thrashed right now. One of them is Walkart, which is down almost 8%. Remember, the company reported a loss of almost one, uh, 200 crores this time around, 150 crores to be precise. That stock is getting thrashed. And the other one is Ujjivan. Uh, remember, uh, the BJP has promised if they win in Karnataka, they will come out with a farm loan waiver. And there are many who expect pressure to come in on names like Ujjivan. So that stock is down about and 6 or you know, also on Walkart, because ahead of numbers, it ran up a lot. And I think uh, what you're seeing right now is a lot of people people trapped uh, on work hard and that's why I think uh, that's one more reason Sonia yeah. is making lows of the morning now. Oh absolutely. Okay uh, Ajay before we let you go one space that we didn't speak about uh, was or, or rather didn't speak about in detail was the uh, FMCG space you know there you had names like Dabur, Imami that came out of the decent set of numbers Avenue Supermarts was not too bad uh, from the consumption space. Uh, you think uh, some money could move into these names where uh, the future is looking a bit more brighter than the other spaces? I think certainly, but before, just a small point on Walkart. You know, if you heard the famous term Parivar, this is a bloody company which has got Parivar all over it. Look at the directors of this company, all Parivar all over it. There is no professionalism in this company. I wonder how, you know, when we talk about these companies, we never speak about board, boards of these companies. What's the ailing these companies? Is the board. Look at this company. It's got all the family members okay. sitting there with no performance and nobody's accountable for it. Leave it aside. I think, you know, it agitates me sometimes that how we let these companies and promoters get away with things which they should not be getting away with it in spite of very poor performance. But coming back to consumption space, I think consumption space is a fantastic space to be and I've repeatedly said that that yes, it is overpriced, high PEs, everything which you can say for an investor will say no, 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 but it's a wonderful space because there is no competition. At the end of the day, even at 5, 7, 6% growth rate of India, some 30, 40 million new consumers are going to enter to start eating Britannia cakes and Britannia biscuits and wear the shoes and buy Dabur, Chavan Prash and whatever ha all the products these guys are peddling. So I think you've got to be in this space. You cannot have a portfolio less than 20% allocation to consumer space in this environment.